Hi everyone, Stan here at JD Gardens. If you're a new viewer, welcome. Please support the channel by planting that subscribe button. And if you're already a viewer, welcome back. Well, we got a very special episode for you today. You've seen the videos that we've done on Garden East, which is our canna showcase garden where we display all our different cannas proudly. Well, today we're going to give you a backstage look at our working canna garden here in Garden North, where we're growing, I believe it's over 80 uh, cannas this year. So it should be pretty interesting, so stick around. Welcome back. So if you're familiar with this channel, you know here at JND we have a variety of different gardens. We have a Garden East, which is our Canna Showcase Garden. We have uh, Garden South, where we grow a variety of different potted plants. We have uh, Garden uh, West, <laughs> where we like to grow our marigolds and seasonal plants. Plus, it's a little getaway for Jackie and I. And then we have Garden North, which is generally our produce uh, garden. Uh, we have our greenhouse over here, where we grow a ton of different tomatoes and kale and everything protected in there from the critters. And um, uh, last year we re did a redesign of Garden North and we turned it into a sunken garden uh, so that we could level off the area and, um, and add a bunch of different planter beds. These planter beds are about three feet wide, 16 feet long, and uh, it gives us a lot of place, space to grow. Now, generally we're growing a lot of produce in there. Some we keep for cannas, but uh, generally it's produce. Well, we were doing a lot of traveling this uh, summer. We were actually out of the country for over two weeks. And uh, so we decided instead of growing a bunch of produce that uh, might go bad while we were away, I said, you know what, Let's, why don't we just try growing all cannas this year? You know, we can't go wrong with that. And I'm so glad we did. because It's been an absolutely incredible summer. Um, not anything like last year, uh, 2022. If you're from the Northeast, you remember, it was such a hot and dry summer. It was so difficult. But this summer has been incredible. And I mean, look at all these cannas growing. It's absolutely incredible. I feel like I'm in, in, in the Amazon here. I'm going to disappear. It's, uh, well, <laughs> it's crazy. And uh, each planter bed, like I said, is about 36 inches wide and about 16 feet long. So we're growing about eight in a row. And uh, it's uh, 16 per planter bed. It's 80, over 80 plants. And it's incredible. And um, um, the reason uh, um, uh, we do this is that uh, so we grow extra cannas as opposed to just Arden East is so that we can uh, collect more seeds. And at the end of the season, uh, we'll dig up the rhizomes and collect those as well, and uh, we can sell them on our, on our Etsy site. So um, it, uh, it's uh, just been really great for us. And this is a working garden, and um, so uh, whereas it does look rather pretty, <laughs> it's, uh, it's really uh, more utilitarian for us. Uh, just cannas, I guess, look great no matter what. So we're constantly coming here, trimming things away, cutting things down, cutting leaves out. We just, it, it actually rained, everything is still wet here, but generally this is a little more trimmed up neatly. And um, because like I said, we're just growing them for the seeds and the rhizomes. But um, it's, uh, um, uh, it is great to come out here and work and enjoy, uh, and enjoy, this, uh, uh, enjoy this garden. So, when trying to grow this many cannas and so many and this many and so many different kinds, it's important about getting placement. And um, you know, when we first decided to when we first did this back in April, um, early mid April of this year, we were trying to figure out uh, where we were going to put all the different cannas. As you can tell, uh, cannas come in a in a bunch of uh, varieties and sizes. We have. Our little, uh, what is this? I think it's, uh, this one's uh, uh, Brilliant, which doesn't grow that big. And then we have over in the back over here, I'm gonna see if I get lost back here, our Musophiliola, which is probably over 12 feet tall. So it's really important that you kind of figure things out. Now, uh, where to put things. Now, here in Garden North, our property is a little cockeyed. So North is over here and uh, East is, over there so when it when we, the sun comes up we don't get anything towards the back even though it's like northeast um, 
our neighbors, as you can see, have a ton of trees here. So we pretty, pretty much don't get anything. But during the course of the day, once it goes, uh, as the sun's coming up in the east, it will start shining the light all day. So this area is absolutely incredible. Uh, in a couple of hours, the sun's just starting to creep right here on the line. I don't know if you can see that in the video because it's pretty early in the morning. And uh, during the course of the day, once it hits, especially come noon, it's just gonna shine on this area and it's absolutely great, which is why we put our greenhouse here. It's constantly gets incredible sun. So it's very important, like I said, how you place your cannas. And it's, um, now I know can cannas can grow, uh, some that are supposed to be a certain size will grow taller one year than the other, but it's important to do the best as you can. And it was funny, when we were laying this back out in April, uh, I think Jackie misunderstood what I, what I was looking to do. So she kind of put all the canovas together and she put all the different series together and uh, put those in size order. But I was like, no, 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 no. What I wanted to do is um, put all the short ones in the front and all the tall ones in the back so that when the sun comes, one's not blocking off the other. So it was a lot of work for her and she got a little perturbed with me, but that's uh, okay. I think she appreciated it at the end, uh, the way it all turned out. So, um, but like I said, uh, you never know how things can be. Uh, you know, we got our taller ones in the back. I think we have, uh, like for instance, we have uh, City of Portland, which is the big one in the back, and Picasso right here in the front. Now, like I mentioned in other videos, Picasso sometimes can be shorter or can grow tall. Right now, like I said, I'm about six feet tall, so well, with the planter bed, let me see. It's about five feet or so. Uh, and it's kind of uh, blocking a little bit. The rose, Canova rose, which can grow big as well, but uh, it's fine because for the most part of the year, the sun's so high up in the air, it kind of shine, sh uh, shines on everything and it, uh, it hasn't affected anything here. It's been incredible. And one of the great things that we uh, figured out this year about growing so many cannas is that, um, as I've mentioned in other videos, uh, pollinators love cannas and they, so they'll, it has done wonders to our tomato production this year. Absolute wonders. I'm so glad we did it. I think last year we did two, just two planter beds and that was fine. This year we did them all and the amount of pollinators, our tomato plants, we it's just been crazy. So I'm so glad we do this. We're gonna decide whether we do it again next year or we're gonna grow some other produce, we'll, we'll decide. But ju uh, judging on how well this all turned out, I think we're going to uh, maybe continue just keeping garden north, at least the planter beds as cannas. So as you can see, I mentioned that the, if you didn't watch the, the video on when we redid Garden North, this is a sunken garden. As you see, it drops around uh, about two foot over here and uh, the property sloped uh, big time. So uh, me and my son had to dig this whole area out and uh, it uh, it's just makes things so much better. So now when, uh, when it rains, everything flushes towards the back and doesn't kill off any of our, uh, <coughs> any of our cannas. Um, right here, this is what, uh, our planting table, which is a mess now. I remember I told you this is a working garden. Uh, we actually call this watchtower. So uh, we're up here, we can uh, take a look at everything and we actually have a camera up here that we can keep an eye on and, and it'll pick up any uh, critters or anything that could be going wrong here in the garden. Though uh, what I found out is as they get too big here, it kind of blocks off the camera's view, but uh, still uh, early on uh, it works great. And uh, like I said, it's a mess. We have all our, <laughs> our stuff that we still have to clean here, but uh, like I said, this is a working garden. So as we go around, uh, come around a little bit there, again, see, we kind of, uh, kind of grow uh, everything that we can. Uh, back here, we have some uh, Black Nights, uh, Tropicana, uh, or um, Black Knight with Tropicana uh, Black, or, or um, it's also known as uh, uh, Red King Humbert. Um, over here, we have, uh, um, what is it? Um, Yellow King Humbert. Over here, uh, original, Tropicana original, or Bethan, or I'm um, sorry, Durban, or Fasian, it's named for everything, uh, South Pacific orange. Now, what we did is, we actually growing two of each. And um, 
we actually have something I'll show you when I uh, get down in the soil. We actually have dividers down into plastic dividers that we have inside the uh, soil so that the rhizomes won't grow into each other because normally we wouldn't want to grow things this close but we want to grow as much as we can so but it's important that uh, no seeds uh, no uh, rhizomes grow into each other so uh, like I said we have two Fasians, two uh, King Humberts, two Black Knights uh, what is this one? Oh boy South Pacific Scarlet uh, Mango two of them uh, this is an interesting one. Um, this is a Black Knight. Um, it was actually labeled wrong. Uh, it was supposed to be called uh, Red Velvet, uh, which was supposed to be kind of like a Black Knight, same kind of colors, but it was supposed to be very small. That's why we planted it here. Like, why would we plant a Black Knight uh, so close to the front? That was just because uh, we figured out, oh, let's try something new, and it turned out not to be a Red Velvet, just a regular old Black Knight. But um, if you watched the video that I did the week before on the walkthrough of Garden, uh, of, uh, Garden East, uh, I, I told you I had a bigger uh, Black Knight, and look at it. <laughs> it's crazy. Look how tall this is. Absolutely beautiful. My favorite uh, can of them all. Uh, let me see which one do we have here. Scarlet Wave, which is a Canova. Again, it's supposed to be a shorter one. Uh, we probably put, a, put this one in the front. This is our Alaska. Uh, we have a few of these. Look at the thickness of this stalk. One of our favorites, just because uh, the, it's a white one and we've been uh, 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 always love having white ones. Uh, let me come around. Uh, we got Jackie's hot rod here. When she's going through the pest, let's move this over. Ah. Okay, so um, over here, look at these seed pods. This is uh, Chinese coral. Very, very pretty. And uh, again, two of them. Look at these seed pods. How oh, they're growing. Absolutely nutty. Um, keep the camera there because it'll be too difficult. I'm going to kind of mention some of that I have. I have orange shades here. I have uh, Tropicana Gold over here. What do we got? We got uh, Crimson Beauty. This huge one in the back is Musophiliola. We have Creta. You have Tenerife. We just have so much. Unfortunately, I couldn't bring the camera in here. It's just it's too crazy. Just kind of want to give you a, so we, we try to grow as much as we can. Oh, let's come around. We try to grow as much as we can. So it's all very tight and very dense, uh, but, that's a, but that's okay. Um, brilliant, as I mentioned, uh, gold leaf. Uh, what do we have here? Lemon, uh, Canova lemon. We have, uh, what do we have here? Bronze, scarlet, so tight in here. Wyoming, very, very pretty. And uh, some of them get lost. We have Pretoria here, even though it's pretty big, but it's uh, just uh, kind of this, uh, what is this one called? This, uh, what is it? Uh, Omega, just as it always does, <laughs> it takes over everything. It's absolutely huge. And that's, uh, that's why we keep it in the back. It'll always get sunlight. As we come around, uh, what do we got here? Uh, Picasso, I mentioned that before. What is this one? Rose, Canova Rose. We have Bronze Orange. We have uh, Yellow. Uh, um, as I mentioned in our other video, this is it's, uh, Canova Yellow. This is our OG, which is uh, the oldest canna that we have. We've been growing it forever. Uh, and um, I think over 10 years now, this one, probably yeah, way over 10 years. And uh, it's grown in some variation, whether it's from seeds or from rhizomes. And it's been with us. Hopefully, it'll be with us for another 10 or so. We have uh, Creta here. Wow, what do we have? Uh, Richard Wallace, another tall one. I hope we can make this all out. <laughs> uh, uh, King City Gold. Just incredible here. Goes back around 16 feet, each planter bed. And uh, over here... Uh, I'll probably have you come in so you can see these, uh, so you can get an idea. We have a uh, Happy Cleo. Uh, again, this one we have a uh, Futurity Pink. We just kind of messed up on that one. We didn't think it would grow that big. Uh, golden Lucifer. We grew some more uh, Red Golden Flames because uh, everyone loves it. So I'm sure they're going to be wanting a bunch of seeds. Now we have uh, Cleopatra. I kind of mentioned. Look at this one. This one's a kind of unusual. I wanted, that's why I wanted to bring you in. I've uh, mentioned Cleopatra. It's one of the most unique plant, uh, um, uh, unique uh, cannas there are in the sense that most cannas, uh, unless they have a particular color, uh, like original, 
are all green. And so when they're first growing, you can't tell, <clears throat> you can't tell what they are. Well, Cleopatra is the one, one of the few that you can because it's a great leaf and has this maroon stripe. So very early on, you can tell what it is. But look at this one. I've never seen it grow like this. This is quite unusual. It's maroon with a green stripe. That's, that's a first for me. And maybe that's common, but I've been growing a Cleopatra for a while. And there's a few of them that have a strong maroon presence. Uh, this one's like all maroon. Well, no, a little bit of green there too. This was kind of new. So uh, maybe, maybe it's not. It's just new to me. I usually used to seeing it, but gorgeous nonetheless. And um, uh, absolutely love it. Uh, what do we got here? We got... Uh, Red Shades, very nice. Uh, Tropicana Original, you can come in close. I mean, might as well. People can get the feeling how claustrophobic it is in it here. Uh, Durban Original, Tropicana Original, whatever you want to call it. I'm not going to get into a uh, contest with people about that. One of the most beautiful leaves. I mean, look at that. It's um, uh, absolutely... The first canna that I ever got was actually Tropicana Original a long, long, long time ago. And I got it because the leaves just kind of stood off for me. I think I was having a party or something, like a luau or something, and I said, wow, this would look just so cool. There's nothing to do with uh, that, but it just kind of looked uh, like a, uh, something that would be <laughs> at a luau. So I said, oh, let me grab it, and I uh, absolutely loved it. Uh, this is one that we planted later. Oh, man, what is this? This was Pink Dawn. This is a small one. But uh, here I have some more uh, Black Knights. And uh, absolutely gorgeous, uh, huge as always. And uh, I think this one was the Omega like I talked about. So you can see how dense it gets. Uh, like I said, everything is still wet, so I'm like getting dripped on. Usually we cut these back because again, this is a working garden, so it, yeah, everything's falling. It, it does get messy in here from time to time. Jackie does a great job of uh, uh, pruning everything. Uh, she has the temperament for that, not me so much. I'd rather do the grunt work, um, but... Um, um, it is, uh, like I said, it is a working garden, so it's important that uh, um, you realize it's not a, it's a showcase garden like our like our Garden East. Now, um, uh, one of the reasons, uh, if you're not familiar with uh, when we did our gar um, Garden East, uh, Garden North over again, we uh, put this crushed stone in the middle as opposed to uh, mulch. Uh, and that's so that we don't get any weeds growing or anything. And it's, it's actually kind of comfortable on the feet, and it helps with drainage. Sometimes, uh, you know, it's funny. We, I mentioned we went, uh, we went away overseas this year, uh, this summer. And <clears throat> the day before we left, it rained, like biblical rain. <laughs> and and it uh, flooded everything. It was, we had so much water. In. All the water was gushing down. But thank God with the work that we did, it kind of diverted everything to the back, but this, uh, and the reason I mention that is because um, these stones really help with drainage. Uh, we designed it so everything slants back and drains from the front all the way behind the greenhouse. And uh, let me come over here, down here, so I can kind of show you. What I mentioned about uh, the different, if you can see this, uh, the different, uh, the different cannas that we have so that the rhizomes don't grow into each other. Uh, we actually put this bark uh, so we don't have to do much uh, weeding. Uh, as, uh, once you cover up the surface, it helps uh, uh, stop weed growth. Uh, let me see if I can kind of dig into here. Uh, where is it? Uh, okay. I'm gonna, uh, I should have had a sample of this. Uh, but if you can come in a little closer. I have this plastic divider, if you can make that out. I get these at Home Depot. And what I do... Whoop, oh, boy. I just broke that. And what if it's about seven inches long? And I pound it into the ground... And then we kind of cover up. Now what this does is create the barrier so as the rhizomes grow, they won't grow into each other. It's really tight down here, but I hope you got that. Um, but uh, let me just cover this back up with bark. Um, but I uh, do that, so like I said, in between all of these plants, because usually it's two of each, I have them as two of each, so that they won't grow into each other. And if we have two different kinds, like on either side, then I'll put it in the middle. And so, like I said, it come depending when the frost is, come late November, early December, once we cut these all down, we dig up all the rhizomes. Uh, rhizomes are impar impossible to tell from each other. Oh, Lord. Uh, so um, it's important that um, you be able to determine which ones are, are which, because are which, I said you won't be able to determine them when you dig them up. So it's important that they're separated. 
one thing I forgot to mention. Um, if you saw my video from last week, which is our Garden East Canna walkthrough, um, I, uh, I mentioned uh, one of my favorite this year was the uh, Thai Pink, and it really didn't uh, come in. Uh, it, uh, the, at that point, the blooms were spent, but here's uh, an extra one that we have, uh, two extra ones we have, and I said I'm not a big pink person, but uh, for some reason, it's just I'm loving this one this year. The pink is beautiful, has some ruffles at the edge of it. It's absolutely gorgeous, nice and tall. Uh, looks like it's going to be a great producer, but I mean, look at these petals. It just, uh, it just stands out to me. And it's funny because um, um, Chinese coral is right in front of it, which is pink as well, but I don't know, something about it's uh, slightly different. But I just wanted to point that out to you. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, backstage look at uh, one of our working gardens here at J&D. Uh, really gives you a sense of the kind of time and effort that Jackie and I like to put into our gardens and show you how much we actually really do love cannas. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope you learned something. If you have any questions on all things canna, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd absolutely love to hear from you. And uh, be sure to hit like and subscribe and ring that bell. So uh, from uh, all of us here at J&D Gardens, from Garden North, uh, I'm going to get back to work. So until next time, remember, yes we can. Uh.